Nearly a month into the Israel-Hamas war, and Israel has announced its forces have completely encircled Gaza City. The fears of a war spillover are also fast becoming a reality as tensions are escalating on other fronts. Let's first take a look at the latest developments. The United Nations has launched an emergency aid appeal seeking $1.2 billion to help some 2.7 million people in Gaza and the West Bank. We urge donors to promptly make resources available for the response. Our ability to ease the suffering of the Palestinian population will depend on adequate funding, safe and sustained access to all people in need wherever they are, sufficient flow of humanitarian supplies and, importantly, fuel. While Israel is deporting thousands of Palestinian workers who were stuck in Gaza ever since the start of the Israel-Hamas war on the 7th of October, the UN has raised, raised deep concern over the latest announcement. And the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has arrived in Israel. This is his third visit since the war started. He will also be visiting Jordan as part of his fresh West Asia tour. Blinken saying that he will discuss in Israel concrete steps to minimize civilian casualties in Gaza. Let's now talk about Israel's ground offensive. Israel has announced the encirclement of Gaza's main city, Gaza City. The city in the north of the Gaza Strip has been the focus of the Israeli attacks during its ground offensive, in which it has pledged to annihilate the Hamas group. Israel's military chief said on Thursday that uh, Israeli... Uh, Soldiers have been operating in Gaza City for the past few days and encircling it from several directions. The Israel Defense Forces released several videos in the last 24 hours that showed their combat activity in Gaza. The IDF reported that over 130 terrorists, quote unquote, have been thwarted in the past 24 hours and that the troops struck the terrorist infrastructure and destroyed large number of weapons, quote unquote. The army saying the proposal of a ceasefire is not currently on the table at all. And as Israel encircles Gaza City, Hamas's military wing has threatened in an audio address that Gaza would be a curse for Israel and has warned that its invading soldiers would go home, quote unquote, in black bags. Meanwhile, a major escalation has taken place at Israel's northern border with Lebanon. The Lebanon-based militant group Hezbollah said that it attacked 19 Israeli positions along the border simultaneously on Thursday. While the military wing of Hamas has also said it fired 12 rockets from Lebanon towards the northern Israeli town of Keryat Shmona. These visuals on your screen are from the northern Israeli town and show the scope of destruction. The IDF, uh, meanwhile, has also released footage that shows it uh, striking targets in southern Lebanon in retaliation to the militant fire. The military saying warplanes and helicopters attacked targets belonging to the Hezbollah, including military headquarters, rocket launching positions and munitions warehouses. The latest escalation on the border coming ahead of a scheduled speech of the Hezbollah chief later today. While well, the U.S. Uh, national security uh, spokesperson uh, saying that there is no indication that Hezbollah is ready to go in full force. And as per reports, the U.S. has also said that it has intelligence showing Russia's Wagner Group may send air defense systems to Hezbollah. The system in question is the SA-22, which uses anti-aircraft missiles and air defense guns to intercept aircraft. Washington has not confirmed that the system has been sent, but it is monitoring discussions involving Wagner and Hezbollah as per the officials. Meanwhile, in other developments, clashes also erupted in the West Bank. 
Since the war began, videos have emerged, in fact, showing latest incidents of violence. Six Palestinians have uh, been reported killed from the Israeli airstrikes in the city of Jenin. The visuals on your screen are reportedly of the Israeli airstrikes. However, Vion cannot verify the footage. And our correspondent Jody Cohen getting us this report. Take a look. Israel Defense Forces troops are clashing with Hamas terrorists in Gaza and the West Bank as it aims to dismantle the group after the 7th of October massacre in Israel, in which Hamas killed 1,400 people in one day. In addition, there are clashes with Hezbollah on Israel's northern border with Lebanon. The Kremlin has reportedly dismissed a U.S. media report that Russia's Wagner group were allegedly planning to send air defense systems to help Hezbollah there. There have also been rockets fired from Iranian-backed groups in Syria, Iraq and Yemen against Israel or U.S. troops in the region. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken is currently in West Asia for meetings to discuss ways to prevent the war from spreading. Spreading. Meanwhile, U.S. drones have reportedly been flying over Gaza to help locate the 240 hostages held there. This is Jody Cohen for We On World Is One. And for more on these developments, uh, joining us on the broadcast this minute is Glenn Deason, Professor of International Relations, University of Southeastern Norway, with us from Oslo. Uh, thanks very much for being here. Uh, I want to first talk to you about the concerns of this war spilling over. Uh, in the latest, a major escalation has uh, taken place at Israel's northern border with Lebanon, uh, with uh, uh, the Lebanon-based militant group Hezbollah saying that it attacked as many as 19 Israeli positions along the border. Uh, but the U.S. national security spokesperson, meanwhile, saying there is no in indication that Hezbollah is ready to go in full force. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, uh, I think obviously the world's eyes are now on Hezbollah, uh, given that they will, they might soon announce their position and what they might do. So uh, this will be quite, uh, quite decisive because they are, they are quite a powerful force uh, to be reckoned with. And uh, uh, this war will most likely spread beyond Gaza now. So uh, the question is, uh, who, who will be the main one to be pulled in first? I think the Israel has uh, somewhat control over the West Bank. Uh, but uh, the, the, this war will, will, I think, eventually will pull someone else in, because this is uh, a very different kind of war. We've had uh, you know, many wars in this region before, but the, the huge amount of uh, of uh, killings of civilians, especially children, but also the prospect of uh, Israel annexing part or all of Gaza has uh, incentivized many other parties to, to possibly join in. And uh, Hezbollah, of course, will be the main uh, the main one. So I think they will, will they already become involved in some way. And I suspect that they will come in in a bigger way as well if this conflict uh, escalates in Gaza. Right. Talking about the expectations from uh, Anthony Blinken's uh, latest visit, uh, uh, where he also met the Israeli president and uh, asserted, um, uh, reiterating America's support for Israel, but also asserting that uh, they will ensure uh, that the October 7 events do not happen again. Uh, and talking about uh, earlier, you know, reports talking about how the visit will focus on concrete steps to be taken uh, to minimize harm to Gaza civilians. Uh, but how... Uh, how realistic are these expectations, really? No, I don't think it's very realistic. Uh, well, keep in mind that warfare, you know, takes space in both the military, economic, but also the information space. And I think that uh, uh, there is a need now to uh, to do something about uh, uh, well the bad sentiments or uprising we see now around the world. Because uh, when Hamas first attacked Israel, of course, the, the whole world was appalled by the horrible crimes committed against uh, Israeli civilians. But now that Israel has uh, struck uh, so hard against Gaza uh, with all the, the deaths occurring, but also for many this seems like Israel uh, will pursue some strategic objectives which aren't related to, to the attacks by Hamas. I think uh, uh, the, the costs uh, not just on the U.S., but the EU as well, is growing because by throwing their full weight behind Israel, uh, as they always do, um, it seemed like a safe bet uh, after 7th of October. But now 
that they might become complicit in ethnic cleansing, possibly even genocide, uh, there's a need to, to, to do something to manage uh, uh, the, the impressions of this. And I think, uh, you know, sending missiles to Israel and at the same time sending med medical equipment to Gaza as they're being bombed and, uh, you know, giving some speeches of empathy, I, I think this is a, probably a good strategy in order to uh, reduce some of the hardship, but I, I don't to reduce some of the bad reputation. I mean, but I don't think that this is necessarily uh, if, if they're authentic. I don't think it's very realistic because mm. it's not going to do much of a difference. Right. What is your assessment of Israel's strategy at this point? Uh, well, it it appears that uh, a key objective will be to come up with a, a more uh, final solution for how, what, what to do with Gaza, uh, because. Uh, uh, but but I, I think that the the objective to first storm all of Gaza, it would create too much of a, a backlash around the rest of the world and possibly pull in other uh, Arab states or a actors. So I think that. Uh, the most likely tactic they will use is uh, all incrementalism or salami tactics where they do uh, smaller uh, smaller operations which then amounts eventually to the same uh, objective but it's a good way to reduce uh, the backlash and uh, and um, uh, yeah give give more uh, well reasonable way for other actors to stay out of this conflict. So it's, it's a common tactic used by the Americans. So I, I suspect this is the way the Israelis uh, will go as well. Uh, but in terms of what the future is for Gaza, it, it, it depends. I, I still assume that they will uh, annex part of Gaza because uh, the, the Israelis have a Palestinian problem. That is, the, there's uh, well too, too many Palestinians. Uh, you know, if you would have a one state solution, uh, the Palestinians and non-Jews would actually become a majority if you include both the West Bank and Gaza. So at some point uh, they will have to, uh, in my opinion, they will uh, look to uh, actually do full ethnic cleansing in terms of pushing them out into Egypt. But uh, if they will do it this time, it's unclear. We're leaving it there for the moment. Thanks very much for being here. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.